Many have observed the positive effects of COVID-19 on the environment. For example, a precipitous decline in greenhouse gas emissions globally, noticeable improvements in air and water quality, and more frequent sightings of wildlife in urban areas. Unfortunately, history suggests that these impacts may only be temporary. Immediately after the global financial crisis of 2008 and 9, the world experienced a rebound effect on fossil fuel use and on the consumption of huge stockpiles of raw materials and of course the inevitable spike in carbon emissions as nations focused on the quickest path to economic recovery. However, we may yet learn from our mistakes of the past. Some are now proposing a different future when this is over, a kinder, gentler, and more caring society that prioritizes healthcare, social services, and environmental protection over the relentless pursuit of economic growth. Indeed, the World Economic Forum suggests that COVID-19 may eventually give rise to a greener global future. Our ability to achieve green growth on our path to recovery may be critical for addressing an even greater and more insidious existential crisis, which is that of climate change. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, even a 0.5 degree Celsius difference in the level of global warming can significantly increase the risk of droughts, of floods, of extreme weather events and poverty for hundreds of millions of people worldwide. Climate change may also reduce the productivity of agriculture, aquaculture, and fisheries across the world. At the local level, Climate change may affect Nepal's food production and supply, ultimately compromising the nation's food security, especially in remote and vulnerable communities. The Paris Climate Agreement, to which Nepal is a signatory, commits countries to hold global warming to below 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial level and to pursue efforts to limit warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Achieving these ambitious targets requires countries to not only undergo the rapid decarbonization of their energy sectors, but also to implement changes to policy and practices in agriculture, forestry, and other land use activities. In a recent study, an international group of scientists reported that nature can provide about 30% of the necessary climate mitigation between now and 2030 for a greater than 66% likelihood of achieving the 2 degrees Celsius target of the Paris Climate Agreement. These so-called nature-based climate solutions include the conservation, restoration and improved management of forests, wetlands and agricultural lands to increase carbon sequestration, reduce carbon dioxide emissions, and enhance climate resilience. These land management strategies can save up to 11 gigatons of carbon dioxide per year, which is equivalent to the combined emissions of the United States and the European Union. In the same way that Low emissions technologies and improvements in energy efficiency are worthwhile investments regardless of future climates. Nature-based climate solutions are no regrets actions that both contribute to addressing climate change impacts and provide multiple benefits to society, including clean air and water, food security and livelihood opportunities. The idea of nature-based climate solutions is gaining traction among international stakeholders across governmental, non-governmental and business sectors, including the United Nations Environment Programme, the International Union for Conservation of Nature, 
and the World Business Council on Sustainable Development, all of which have recently incorporated nature-based solutions in their institutional goals, strategies or initiatives. There are, however, considerable science and implementation gaps that need to be addressed to identify and realize the full potential of nature-based climate solutions. For example, the potential and limits of nature-based climate solutions for increasing carbon sequestration and reducing carbon dioxide emissions in South Asia have yet to be studied. Furthermore, the value of natural ecosystems as green infrastructure for enhancing climate resilience through processes such as biodiversity conservation, coastal protection and flood regulation remains unclear. Quantifying the cost-effectiveness and viability of nature-based solutions for Nepal and South Asia would help inform climate and land use policies for achieving climate mitigation and adaptation goals. Now, another key consideration is that nature-based climate solutions may not always align with the other interests and priorities of society. Climate policies favoring one set of actions may create barriers for others. For example, the need of some rural communities to maintain their traditional livelihoods or expand their agricultural lands may compete with climate strategies that protect or restore forests for carbon storage and sequestration. Now, identifying these potential opportunity costs and trade-offs would be critical for ensuring the effective, collaborative and equitable implementation of climate solutions across South Asia. Now, given Nepal's emerging science and technology sector, significant infrastructure for test bedding innovations and entrepreneurial environment for cross-sectorial collaborations, I think the country has the potential to lead the discovery and delivery of innovative climate solutions. Innovations in science and technology can maximize the effectiveness of nature-based solutions, reduce barriers for their implementation, and create new solutions and economic opportunities. For example, the development of real-time terrestrial monitoring systems using satellite, civilian drone, machine learning, and other novel technologies can help keep track of carbon stocks in forests, as well as enhance the timeliness and effectiveness of emergency responses during forest fires and other catastrophic events. And more importantly, given Nepal's intimate knowledge of the social, cultural and political context of Asia, the country is ideally positioned to help with the implementation of climate mitigation and adaptation strategies in socially and culturally responsible ways for achieving a carbon neutral economy and stable climate at local, regional and global levels. The COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in great suffering, economic hardships and a less livable planet. But it has also demonstrated that humanity is capable of transforming ourselves overnight to overcome an existential crisis. It has awakened us to the fact that all people, all nations and all species are interconnected and interdependent. Perhaps most importantly, it has reminded us that we, humans, are an inextricable part of nature. Global climate change will likely result in more planetary crisis, more economic shocks and more human suffering. But we now know that we have nature on our side as we face down these threats. We now know that we can and we must be fighting with, not against nature, as we restart, reinvent and return to a cleaner, greener and more sustainable way of life. Thank you.